Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe. Uh, so we're going to be demoing another quick deck tech. Uh, these are for Throne of Eldraine standard decks. Uh, so this is some brews I'm throwing together. Uh, I'm going to try to do as many of these quick, like, 5-10 minute deck techs as possible. Um, but if I miss any of the decks, you can catch... I'm going to try to post, post as many new brews in all color combinations on my Aether Hub. So you can find it uh, just over here, MTG Joe, just search it up. I'll post all my deck lists there, uh, so you can take a look over there. Um, so these are theory crafted decks. Um, proof of concept still needs to be played out, but these are kind of the starting point of decks I want to throw together once the new standard starts and go from there. Uh, these are kind of some of the pet cards that stand out to me that I'm excited to play with. Um, and then there's a combination of decks uh, viewers have requested, so if there's anything else you'd like to see, uh, drop a comment below. I'll try to brew something up. Uh, in anticipation. Uh, I'm trying to get Thursday off work and then we will be streaming all day. Um, so we'll get started on that. Uh, quick note uh, before we go through this blue white prison deck. Um, if you are planning on purchasing cards uh, for this new set, uh, it's an exciting set, it's a big set for, and it's going to be shaping standard going forward. Uh, and you're purchasing them through TCG Player. I do have an affiliate link in the video description down below. If you click the link, follow it, do your purchase as normal, just let them know that I sent you uh, from the channel. It's a free and easy way to support and help things out here. Um, basically, any minimal amount that I make in kickbacks just goes back into the channel. It's just me buying cards. So really, I'm just looking to kind of be able to brew as much as possible so it helps out the channel. Enough pandering, let's get to this. So this concoction. Uh, this is my no fun deck. If it works, this will make me happy and make my opponents miserable. So, I saw a particular card, Foli F Folio of Fancies. So, Folios of Fancy, players have no maximum hand size. Uh, X, X, and tap. Each player draws X cards. Three mana, two and a blue. Each, play each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand on from on top of their library into their graveyard. So, this is like a mill card, but the way I read it is the first ability, each player draws X cards. Well... Our little friend Narset here says each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. So this is a way we can kind of lock our opponent out so we can draw a bunch of cards and our opponent can't. So this is what I generally refer to as a prison deck. Or not I, but in general people refer to it as a prison deck. You're basically trying to lock your opponent out from doing things. Uh, so this is a heavy Planeswalker focus control deck. Um, we are winning mainly through mill in this deck or a kind of self uh, lock. So there's two kind of lock pieces in place. Um, so with Narset, you have the Folio Fancies first half where we get a bunch of card advantage. But really what I've been wanting to do for a while is the Emergency Powers plan. So what Emergency Powers says is each opponent shuffles their hand and into their, sorry, hand and graveyard into their library, then draw seven cards, exile, Emergency Powers, if you play it during your turn, you get to drop a card with converted mana cost seven or more. So what I want to do in this deck is we draw seven cards. The opponent shuffles their hand in the library, the graveyard. They don't draw anything. We draw seven, and we get to play any creature or any card in our deck. Um, so that's a way we can play it like that. So the rest of the deck. Donna hopes a maybe. I'm probably going to cut it once we start playing, but it's an alternative kind of win condition where we can make a lot of 1-1 one, one tokens and uh, gain some life that way. If we gain any life, we can also draw some cards. Uh, Dovin's Veto is kind of just anti-counter spells, opponent stuff. Uh, might be better served as just a general like quench or something, but we got to play it out. Glass Casket is a card that I'm quite uh, excited about. It is a 2-mana early creature removal so it exiles any creature with cmc three or less until it leaves the battlefield in a pinch you can also bounce it with teferi uh, to recycle it if there's a more pressing threat to deal with uh, prison realm same idea this deals with planeswalkers as well has the upside of uh, exile so we're playing eight cre creature exile card sorry six creature exile cards then we have the core of any good blue white control deck four in our sets four teferis uh, so this is the no fun police uh, until we can play brawl and play Teferi lock. Um, so we have that. 
Then I have Ashiok Dream Render. So I don't think that people will be doing the searching as much with Scape Shift gone, but it does have the upside of uh, target player putting the top four cards of the library, exiles their graveyard. So with emergency powers, then they also don't get those cards. And it's uh, more of a, a mill condition that works with folio of fancies as well. Uh, one Mu, Mu Yanling. I usually don't like a lot of her, but a one of is usually where I kind of like it being. Uh, early game, it just kind of slows down attackers. can make the tokens. If it goes unchecked, then it's just a way for us to draw cards. So I kind of like it in that context. Um, more than her, more than it, it's not the most because it's not straight creature removal. It's more of a tempo play and the minus ability for the four four. You need to uptick before you can downtick. Karn the Great Creator. So uh, some people have asked for dedicated artifact decks. I'll try to get to those, but I love Karn. So the combination of Karn, Ugin, and Mystic Forge. I need to explore more. I had that artifact pile deck we were playing, but with a lot of like Mox Ambers and Psy mo moving on, we've lost a couple cards. Uh, but I'm going to try to brew something with that. So Karn's basically a tutor spell for our sideboard. So we have a lot of good one-ofs in the sideboard to deal with. Um, and because we like we can animate a casket and start attacking in as well, uh, which is a kind of cool effect. So I'll go to the sideboard in a sec. Uh, one Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. Uh, we can kind of draw out our deck if need be. Uh, we can also choose to self-mill ourselves, but it's a way for us to kind of keep milling out the opponent as well. This might be unnecessary with Ashiok, but I want to play it out first. Uh, three Time Wipes. I'd probably recommend, honestly, looking at this deck now, I'm going to kill the Donna Hope and just go to four Time Wipes. I think we need the Sweepers more than anything. So I'm going to make that change after the video. Uh, two Ugins, Catch All Removal, makes our colorless spells cost two less. Basically just Ugin in the main board. Uh, but anything we fetch with... Uh, sorry makes Karn cost less. Anything we fetch with Karn can be reduced as well. Uh, emergency powers, as I mentioned, and this card I think is actually really good. Uh, so it costs three less if your opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard. It's a little bit of a non-bow with Ashiok because she does exile. So this might be Magic Mirror instead. Um, I want to test out a couple games to see how consistently we get to cast this for four mana because it's effectively four mana draw four cards, which is a very good rate at instant speed. So we'll see how often these kind of counteract with each other once we actually play some games. Um, the one card that's not in the main board is Smothering Tide. Usually with these emergency power decks, you see Smothering Tides. I think it's a little too slow. And we're not really playing like an X deck like Banefire or anything like that to really take advantage of the surplus mana. Uh, the land base, uh, we don't have the Scry Land, so we're playing Tranquil Cove for the life gain. We have a lot of Planeswalkers, so we're playing three in our Planar Beacons. Uh, in, once we play some more, we might go up to four. We have enough density to get utility out of this. So it's all incidental life gain to keep us alive. We have the Hallowed Fountains and then two Castle Vantress. It's just a good way to scry. It's free card in the deck pretty much. It'll likely always come into play untapped. Sideboard wise, and what we can cast with uh, Karn. So Karn says choose an artifact, doesn't care about colorless. So we can get colored spells as well. Color, so something like Graft Digger's Cage. Um, so there's going to be, I don't know if graveyards will be a thing, but we have it in here. Um, their Kethis combo is probably going away, so we're not going to need it as much. Um, so this is something we want to see. It might make more sense to get one of the artifacts that exiles the opponent's graveyard. This again, sideboards at this early in standard usually aren't that impactful because you want to see what you're going to be playing. Uh, Sorcerer's Spyglass to deal with Planeswalkers might go up to three in here uh, once we play. Dovin's Veto is for the control matchups. Cerulean Drakes versus Red Base to Aggro. Uh, Folio Fancies, we have a third one here. Probably can be cut for something else. It's more just a tutor if you don't have it in your hand to start getting that card draw engine. A fourth Glass Casket to fetch with uh, Karn. Vantress Gargoyle is an interesting card that I want to see how good it is. Um, so likely what I would do is in the matchups where Mill is too slow, you take out Narset, you bring this in. Uh, so when your opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard, it can attack. It's a two mana 5-4 and it can't block unless you have four cards and then it has a Mill condition on its own. But this could be something that might be useful. Um, might be better in a dedicated Mill deck, 
but I want to try it out. So we're playing three of these. So all these cards here can all be searched with Karn along with God Pharaoh's statue. So this is a tax effect on your opponents. If is it Phoenix is a thing, anything like that, it's a tax. We had the fourth time wipe here. Uh, this will probably go into the main board. Um, and then we have Mystical Dispute. If blue, like if you have like the Simic Flash decks, uh, this is a good way to kind of counter those. With the green decks, probably we want Aether Gust, to be honest. Um, so I'd probably tweak it around there, but it's pretty much the shell. I'm not too worried about the sideboard right now. Uh, sideboards evolve based on meta. It's really the main board. So I would probably put the Time Wipe in, get rid of the Donna Hope, and that's pretty much the deck. Uh, this might be a pile of cards that doesn't work, but it is generally the way I like playing Magic by not making the opponent play Magic. So this is something I will test out and go from there. Uh, so that's pretty much the deck. Let me know what you think. If you do want to make any changes or have any suggestions, let me know. And if there's anything you'd like to see, drop it in the comments below. Um, and like I said, you can always check on uh, MTG Joe on Aether Hub. I'll post as, as many decks as I can before Throne comes out to be played. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great one.